Praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to say thank you again to Sister Glenda from Crenshaw Christian Center that worked so hard with the WAD Legacy uh, staff and all. So I just, we, we're, we're about to go, don't worry. But my mother was a big lady. She was big and powerful. I just want to say this. At, at the age of 10, Daddy and uh, Mommy, Whitney and I, uh, we traveled to Cleveland, Ohio, and I want to say Meridian, Mississippi, and then we went to Washington, D.C. for a family trip. That's in 1980. I was 10 years old. I was massaging Daddy's feet with lotion, and I took pride in taking the stress and pain up off his feet, and I looked at both of them in the bed, and I said, you know what? I will never allow you guys to go to a convalescent home. I'll take care of you. And I didn't know I was prophesying at that time. And I'm so grateful to God that I went to M&M's, met the right husband that helped me take care of my father while pregnant with our son. And he was six months, six months old when my daddy died, but also when my mother called me and said, Wendy, can I please come and live with you all? I said, Mommy, let me try to find some places nearby, you know. So we had a lot of things going on in our family at the time, but I watched God clear people out the way. I watched things just move, and I mean, I was like, what's going on, God? What are you doing? And she called again, Wendy, how you doing, pretty? I said, hi, pretty girl. She said, can I come live with you and Bishop and the kids? I said, Mommy, something just happened. I said, I think we could do something. I said, let's just wait till that big storm we had a couple of years ago in December. I said, it's really bad, Mama. They're going to shut down the, the grapevine. She said, okay. I said, as soon as it's over, we come and get you. Two days later, still storming and raining, Star gets a phone call. Star. She said, hi, Gammy. She said, I have a surprise for you. She said, what's the surprise, Gammy? She said, I'm outside. <laughs> like my husband said, she worked real well with pressure. She got our cousin Mark on Patsy's son and Aunt Delphine's brother all the way from Chicago and she made them ride that truck with tarp on the back. That's that Burkett. Burkett know how we get down. We, we gotta go, we gotta go. We catch plant, we do whatever we gotta do. My mother came in the house and <sighs> to take care of her, to watch my daughter administer injections for her diabetes and check her sugar. It killed me inside, but to, get her dressed and allow her to be on Facebook with me and watch her pray in our church and sit next to Sister Ina at our church and she fall asleep and make friends with folk in the church. Mother Greer is sneaking her donuts. <laughs> Evangelist West is bringing a big bag of haagen ice cream. I'm like, Mama. She told everybody, my daughter is the mayor. I said, I'm just trying to, I want you to live. Whitney and I shared our parents all of our lives, but we were taught to do so and that it was the will of the Lord. But I had one year and 10 months of seeing my mother every day shy of three days. That was my heart's desire. And I just thank you all for treating my mother so nice. And those of you that did down through the years, God bless you all. And without further ado, everyone stand to your feet. When I'm thank Dr. Powell and um, Judge Maybelline and the Brown family from Texas. Without further ado, everyone put your hands together as we present to some and introduce to others. Yeah, you can put your hands together. I know you're trying to figure out who's doing the eulogy. Some would call her your auntie. Some would call her your sister. Some would call her your best friend. Some will call her your mother in the gospel. Put your hands together to receive one last time. My mama, 
Dr. Wanda Davis. I don't take it lightly that I'm on assignment to speak into your lives today. As I look back over my life, my oldest daughter is 32. I don't know how that is, and I'm just 34. But when I look back over my life and I think about all the things that the Lord allowed me to go through, I realize he was preparing me just for this one moment. And I'm just blessed. I'm blessed of the Lord. I acknowledge even my parents, Bishop and Mrs. Stallworth of Stockton, California, that taught me about Jesus as a little girl, that baptized me in his name and allowed me to know about being filled with the Holy Ghost at age six. I used to complain and say, God, why was I saved so young? I don't have the testimony that I was on drugs and slept with 24 men and slipped over to women every now and then. And I said, look like my ministry would be more effective if I had had some history. And one day I was complaining about being saved so young. God said, I'm tired of you asking me why I saved you so young. He said, I'm getting ready to tell you. He said, the first time I saved you is from your sins. And then the second place of salvation is to save you from you. Icar means a place of drunkenness. Why would a leading lady have to go to a place of drunkenness? God said, I take you there because I want to give you a sobriety test. I want to see, can you take your test and come out sober? I want to test you with power and see, can you handle it? I want to take power from you and when I strip you, I want to see, can you handle it? I want to test you with love and I want to test you with lust. I want to test you with alcohol and drugs and cigarettes. I want to test you with men, and I want to test you with women, and see can you come out sober. He said, and the reason that I take you to this place of drunkenness, because it ain't but one more place to go after you go to the place of drunkenness, and that's a place called uttermost. Oh, in Psalms, you know the scripture, if you look for me in heaven, I'm there. If you go to hell, you'll find me. And even if you go to the uttermost parts of the sea, you can't go nowhere without God. But he wants to know that you have passed your test before he releases you to uttermost, because uttermost is endless blessings and miracles. He's got to know, can I trust you with trouble before I can trust you with a blessing? Not because you are weaker, but you are as the weaker. Some of y'all just too smart and too wise for your own good. Some of you are, are, are already were established financially when you got married and you already had financial resources. Or else you had a job and was soon to have them. But when you get married, you gotta go, you gotta be smart enough to be dumb enough to let a man take care of you. If I get caught and fall down here, it's only because I want a fine brother to pick me up. Shut your mouth. Oh you, oh, you do know I'm single. I don't see all men as trees. Go ahead, Mama Wanda. So if I fall, girls, don't you come. Let the men pick me up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody just got rid of your arthritis laughing. You just not going to do it today. Well, I was asking God, God, what would you like me to share with your great people today? And, 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 and there's this been something that God has been dealing with me for several, about three years now, and I, I keep trying to get away from it, but God told me, don't get up off of it until my people are out of it. Y'all know where I'm getting ready to go. Hang on to your seat and say, let's talk about the sex trap. So you know, you know, sex, S-E-X, sex. <laughs> hey, a single man is supposed to be an uncomfortable man. He that plays house never gets a house. 
You tell that Negro, if we not married, I don't cook for you, I don't wash for you, I don't iron for you, I don't clean for you, I don't babysit for you, and I'm sure not going to sleep with you. Get smart, get smart. Tell them no, Ringy, you get no thing. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them. Tell them, tell them, tell them. future, I would love this channel to be an over-the-top platform, getting a play button, of course, and reaching a wider audience. And my aim is to point people back to God because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We are in the last and evil days. Let's keep our ears open. In conclusion, I need your help. Your seed is important whether you're new to this channel or not. Liking the next video that I upload on any platform underneath Catch My Praise. Giving credit to where you get your sources also helps. Your generous gifts of any amount are welcome. Catch App is always open under Catch My Praise. Why am I doing this? Because it takes a lot to do a lot. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.